Amen. And so I'm going to, I'm going to ask that you open your Bibles uh, to 2 Kings 5. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Kings 5. We're going to begin reading some scriptures there as we get into our word. The word that God has given us to share with you today. We're going to begin with, begin with 2 Kings, the fifth chapter. And I want to read uh, verse 1, and then we're going to read verses 9 through 16. Amen. I didn't see the precious little baby there in the house. Amen. God bless. Amen. 2 Kings 5, uh, beginning at verse 1, and then we're going to read uh, beginning at verse 9 through 16. Amen? Amen. The scripture reads, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Verse 9 says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, means he was angry. And he went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, wash and be clean. Then verse 14 says, went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the sayings of the man of God, and his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God and all his company and came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Amen. And I want to continue with the topic today, identifying and eliminating hidden pride, the silent thief, part two. Hidden, identifying and eliminating hidden pride, the silent thief, part two. Would you bow your heads and let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you now. We come to you in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Giving you praise for this day you have made. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. And as the song says, your goodness continues to run after us. And so we thank you for that. And we thank you, Lord, for how you've been so faithful, even as the song says. And now, Lord, we ask, Lord, that as we speak a word in the lives of the people today, we pray, God, that your word would go out and not return void, and that it would accomplish that which you sent it to do. We will give you praise, and all the glory and the honor will be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. 
presence of the Lord. So again, today I want to continue with the message entitled, Identifying and Eliminating Hidden Pride, The Silent Thief, which I began on last week. With that, I want to again reiterate to you that God has shown me that one of the things that would serve us all greatly in this new year and beyond is to identify and eliminate any cases of hidden pride that may exist in our lives, even as the topic implies. Because I believe that I heard the Spirit of God say to me clearly in my time of meditation and study that pride can be a silent thief in our lives. And so it is my intention today to equip you so that the sin of pride does not rob you in your life. And with that, in, in part one of this message, uh, last, or last week, God allowed me to use the story of Naaman in 2 Kings 5 to prove how pride can indeed be a hidden thief in our lives. And perhaps I will get the opportunity to reiterate and expound more on some of the things that God has revealed to us about Naaman's pride as we progress in the message today. However, I want to start today by giving you some examples of how this spirit of pride can be operating as a thief in our lives and we not even know that it is if we aren't careful. You see, pride can indeed be the root of many of the problems that we struggle with in our lives without our ever really knowing that it is. And so the first example that I want to give you is that pride can potentially rob us of every good thing that God wants to manifest in our lives if we don't identify it and eliminate it. For example, if we aren't careful, pride can cause a person to think that they are better than another person. And therefore it has the potential to rob us of the type of relationship that God wants to have with one another. For the Bible teaches in Romans 12 and 3 that we should not think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. And then Philippians 2 and 3 teaches us that we should esteem others better than ourselves. Now the second example of how pride can rob us if we aren't careful is Pride has the potential to influence a spirit of dishonesty. Amen. And this is true because pride will sometimes tempt you to exaggerate information about yourself to create a false impression of who you really are. And therefore, pride has the potential to rob a person of an honest spirit because of their desire to impress others. Number three, if we are not careful, pride could cause us to refuse to apologize to someone, even when we know we are wrong. How many of us have witnessed and experienced that? Therefore, pride has the potential to rob us of the spirit of reconciliation with one another. Number four, if we aren't careful, pride can cause a person to always want to be the center of attention. And as a result, it can cause a spirit of jealousy to rise up in them when it seems that someone else is getting more attention than they are. Therefore, pride has the potential to rob us of the spirit of harmony one with another. Number five, 
If we aren't careful, pride can cause us to always want to be the one being served. Rather than taking on the spirit of a servant ourselves. The Bible teaches us that those greatest among us should be our servants. So therefore, pride has the potential to rob us of the spirit of servitude. Number six, if we aren't careful, pride can influence the type of spirit to rise up in a person that causes them to always place their needs above the needs of others that they love. Therefore, pride has the potential to influence a selfish spirit and rob us of good relationships because of selfishness. The Bible teaches us in Philippians 2 and 4 that we should look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Finally, if we are careful, pride can also cause a person to always feel that they are right. Amen. And that everyone else who doesn't agree with them is wrong. Therefore, pride has the potential to rob us of the willingness to listen to the thoughts and ideas of others. The Bible teaches us that we should be swift to hear and slow to speak. And so, I wanted to begin with these examples today to show us how hidden pride can rob from us. So that you would gain more insight on this problem of pride as we continue in the message today. And that you would desire not to have pride to be hidden in your own life. With that, we must realize that even when Satan approached Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the spirit of pride was in operation as a silent thief. Because most of us know that Satan's total intention was to arouse and promote the spirit of pride in Adam and Eve in order to get them to disobey God. In fact, it was Satan's own pride that caused him to lose his place in heaven himself. This is one of the reasons that God hates pride in our lives, as revealed in Proverbs, the sixth chapter. You see, James chapter four and six says to us, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. In other words, this verse suggests to us that the remedy for pride is to walk in humility. Because when we choose humility, God himself bestows grace upon our lives. This is why 1 Peter 5 and 6 tells us to humble ourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You see, the problem with the spirit of pride is that it encourages us to exalt ourselves. Amen. But 1 Peter 5 and 6 revealed to us that God will exalt us in due time if we instead humble ourselves before him and not seek glory for our own selves. Because as Christians we should be primarily interested in bringing glory to God and not focusing on glory for our own selves because that is an indication that pride exists in your life. If you always want glory and praise for what's going on in your life, 
It is a clue that you are dealing with pride in your life. And so, in the case of Naaman in last week's message, God has allowed us to see that many examples of the pride that was operating in Naaman's life in 2 Kings 5, he, we were able to see how pride affected him. And that this pride could have, could have conceivably cost Naaman his healing. Had he continued to allow it to get in the way of the process that God had chosen to bring his healing to pass. In other words, Naaman could have allowed the issue of pride in his life to steal from him that which God desired for his life. And even that which he desired for his own life. And we must understand that the same thing can happen in, to us if we don't deal with the pride that could possibly be hidden in our lives. You see, I want to remind you again that 2 Kings 5 and 1 reveals that Naaman did have a lot of good things going on for himself. However, at the end of verse 1, the Bible says, but he was a leper. And so I want to again place emphasis on the fact that although 2 Kings 5 and 1 mentions all of the great things that it does about Naaman, there was still something that Naaman needed from God. Now, I want to read verse 1 again for your benefit, placing emphasis on this last phrase, that he was a leper. Verse 1, 2 Kings 5 says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Now as I said to you before, this verse reminds us of the fact that though there can be some wonderful things about us, but yet there could be some things that God is yet trying to do to bring healing in our lives. But sometimes pride gets in our way. You see, I want us to see through Naaman's life that sometimes when God has used us to do some great thing, sometimes we forget that it is God doing the great thing and not us. And because sometimes we forget that it is God that is doing the work, we as a result desire the glory for ourselves because of the sin of pride. And because of this fault, pride can sometimes block what God wants to get through us and to us. Now, let's look a little closer at verse 1 again because I want to show you how this is really the case in Naaman's life. Verse 1 once again says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of, of Assyria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Now I want to point out right here that the scripture clearly tells us who it was that really gave the deliverance to Syria. The Bible says that it was the Lord that gave the deliverance to Syria and that God only used Naaman to bring it to pass. And so what I want you to see from this is that sometimes when God has used us to do some great thing in our lives, we can sometimes forget that it's God that's really doing the work and that we are only being used by God. 
to do the work. And because sometimes we have a hard time separating, we have a hard time separating who it is that is really doing the work in our lives, pride can begin to arise in our hearts and manifest in our lives. And as a result, we desire to receive glory that is only due unto God. The Bible reveals once again that God hates pride. In fact, again, this was the very reason that Satan was kicked out of heaven. Because pride had begun to rise up in his heart. And as a result, he wanted the glory that was only due to God. Now the Bible says in Romans, excuse me, in Revelations chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, it says, and there was war in heaven. It says, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. The scripture says, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now I wanted to read that verse over in Revelations. Because I want you to understand that it was pride that had originated in the heart of Satan that brought about the war that took place in heaven. See how dangerous pride is? Pride caused a war to take place even in heaven. The pride that had resonated in the heart of Satan. And the scriptures bear out that as a result of this pride, Satan and his cohorts lost their place in heaven. And so this scripture is a reminder to us that pride is a thief. Because even Satan himself lost his place in heaven because pride had risen up in his heart. And we need to realize that pride can cause us to lose our place as well with God if we aren't careful. This is why we must identify and eliminate every ounce of pride in our lives. Because it is a silent thief. Now, this again is the reason that I believe God has shown me that one of the things that would serve us greatly in this new year and beyond is to identify and eliminate any cases of hidden pride in our lives. This is one of the things that I want us to focus on, that I believe God wants us to focus on in our lives because pride is a thief. Pride, pride excuse me, will will rob you in your life if you are careful. Amen. So we must understand the criticality of eliminating this thief in our lives because it originates with Satan. Amen. And it causes us to desire things that we don't deserve. We don't, there's some glory that we want that we don't deserve. There's some things that we want to take credit for that we don't deserve credit for. Sometimes because we try to take credit for what God is doing. As I tried to point out in 2 Kings 5 and 1. Again, I want you to see that the scripture does say that Naaman was a great man with this master. That the scripture does say that he was honorable. But the scripture also says it was by him that the Lord gave the deliverance to Syria. Naaman didn't do it. God only used him to bring it to pass. You see, pride can get in our way of receiving that which God wants to bring to our lives. 2 Kings 5 reveals that in Naaman's case, it could have gotten in the way of Naaman even receiving 
the healing that God wanted to bring to his life. You see, God's chosen method of healing Naaman of his leprosy was to use Elisha to instruct him to go wash in the Jordan seven times. And it is revealed that because of Naaman's pride, Naaman did not want to go wash in the Jordan River. In fact, Naaman had become angry with the prophet for instructing him to go wash in the Jordan because in Naaman's mind, there were better rivers for him to wash in. You see how that pride was operating in his life. And it's amazing sometimes how a person can get upset or get angry. As I pointed out before, with a man or a woman of God about a particular thing, when that man or woman of God is simply doing the thing that God has given them to do in the case of Elisha. Elisha, Elisha was interested in bringing healing to Naaman's life, but he was more interested in obeying God. And Naaman was upset with the prophet. While at the same time, we must understand that we can be just as guilty as Naaman sometimes in allowing pride to operate in our lives. We must understand that sometimes if we don't get rid of this spirit of pride, we ourselves can be upset with people for no reason in our lives. Amen. So we must allow the leading of the Holy Spirit to help us in ridding ourselves of pride. Because in Naaman's case, it was acting as a thief in his life and was about to rob him even of his own healing that he needed for his life. Amen. Amen. Now, as we can see in Naaman's case, it was actually robbing him of a true appreciation of what God was doing through the prophet Elisha. Because Naaman was actually complaining to his servants about the process that God had designed for his healing to take place. Naaman was more concerned about his pride or the glory that he would receive himself than actually his own healing in that moment. And that is why pride is a thief oftentimes. Because we can see that it's operating in Naaman's life and he doesn't even recognize it. Or doesn't even seem to recognize it. Because some of us know pride is in our hearts. But we don't have, we don't have any desire to get rid of pride. That is the enemy, sure enough, operating in any person that refuses to get rid of pride in their own lives, particularly when it serves them in a negative way. And so it is conceivably true that Naaman could have been robbed of his own healing because he was complaining about the process that God had allowed for his healing to take place. And I want to ask you a question for thought that I posed even in part one of this message. And here it, here it is. How many times have you allowed pride to rob you of the blessings that God has in store for you? I want you to think about that. How many times, if you look back over your life, has pride been operating in your life and could have possibly robbed you of the things that God wanted to bring to pass in your life? Simply because you did not like God's chosen method. And how many blessings have you missed in your life because you were mad at the prophet like 
Naaman was. You were mad at the prophet that God was trying to use in order to bring forth the healing that you needed in your own life. Another thing that I pointed out, that I want to point out this message, is that Naaman was also upset with the prophet because in Naaman's mind, Elisha seemed to only treat him like an ordinary person. And the reason that Naaman felt the prophet Elisha only treated him like an ordinary person is because when Naaman came to the door of Elisha's house, with his horses and his chariots. The Bible says he stood at the door of Elijah's house, but Elijah sent a messenger to him to give him the instructions for his healing instead of coming to the door himself. So here again, pride causes Naaman to get upset with Elijah because Elijah won't come to the door. You see, Naaman wanted to be treated special because of the pride that existed in his heart. Because he thought it was all about him. And so I want to reiterate that the first clue that pride exists in our lives is when we want to be treated more special than anybody else, but yet oftentimes we don't see a need to treat anybody else special. You see, neighbor did not like the fact. I want you to look at verse 9. Let's look at this in the scripture. Because I want to be sure you that you stay with me here. In verse 9 of 2 Kings 5, look at what the scripture says about Naaman. It says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. Now it's amazing to me that the first thing that verse 11 says is, th is that but Naaman was wrong. Now I want you to look closely at this. The Bible says that the prophet sent a messenger unto to Naaman who was standing at the door telling him to go wash in the Jordan but the thing that Naaman did not pay attention to is that the prophet let him know that he would be healed from his leprosy if he just obeyed those instructions but the first thing Naaman does is become angry in verse 11 the Bible says, and he went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. It's amazing how God can talk to the prophet about what he needs you to do, but sometimes you act like you have all the answers and you still not heal. Amen. But if we learn how to listen and obey and drop the pride that is operating in our lives, Sometimes God can bring the healing that we need in our life. You see, perhaps Naaman thought that he was too good to talk to the messenger that, that Elisha sent. But you see, it was the messenger who had the keys to his healing. And that is why we should be careful who we shun in our lives. I mean, you know, there are some people who've got so much pride in their lives that some people they think they're too big and too good to talk to. I know, I know you have had some experiences like that. How many of you have walked past people and they won't even part their lips? Oh, that's happened to me on this week. Walking, how you doing? Act like I, he, nothing was hurt. I know you heard me. I got a big mouth, and I'm standing right beside you. You heard me, but you don't want to speak. You see, sometimes pride can make us look like a fool. Because if somebody, out of the kindness of their heart, is speaking to you, it shows foolishness in your heart to not speak back. Simple thing to show kindness when kindness is shown to us. You see, 
Pride can get in the way of many things and many blessings that God is trying to bring to pass in our lives. In this case, Naaman could have possibly lost his healing. I missed the opportunity to be healed because of the way he was complaining about the process that God had designed for his healing. Amen. You see, it's very clear in the scriptures that Naaman had become very, very proud for various reasons in his life. That is perhaps why God chose the process that he did for Naaman's healing. Perhaps that is the reason that the prophet told him to go to Jordan instead of the other rivers that he thought was better. And perhaps that is the reason that the prophet sent somebody to him that he did not want to talk to. Let me ask you something. How many people are there that you don't want to talk to but who have the keys to your breakthrough. Come on, somebody. Y'all listen. I know I may not be screaming and shouting, but I'm, I'm speaking something in your life that you need to hear today. Sometimes there are people who have the, the breakthrough to the healing that needs to take place in your life, but your pride stops you from interacting with them. This is the reason that I say to you that pride is a thief in your life. Because pride operates sometimes. Pride causes you to, to not do the things that you ought to do in order to receive what God wants you to have. Does anybody listen to me? Again, God just might be hiding the breakthrough that is needed in your life in the person that you can't stand. Oh, help me, Jesus. God might have your breakthrough come through somebody that you don't want to deal with because of pride. Particularly when you can't stand them for no reason. Oh my God. Because your pride doesn't allow you to like them. And your pride doesn't allow you to talk to them. But I'm here to tell you today that sometimes and in some cases your pride is stealing from you. Amen. You see I want you to see that there could be a thief that is operating on the inside of you that is robbing you of blessings that God wants for your life. But that spirit of pride hinders you. How many times have you in your own life know that you were dealing with pride? You knew that you were dealing with pride because there were some things that you knew you ought to do but you just didn't want to do it. Listen to me. There's some times you want to do things but you wouldn't do it it was the right thing to do, but you wouldn't do it because of pride. I'm trying to help you to, to identify cases of pride in your life. And you must have the audacity to do the things that pride says you shouldn't do. I tried to influence you not to do. Now, the other thing that I want to point out is how Naaman turned away in a rage in verse 12 of this chapter. After he complained to his servants that there were other rivers that were better than the Jordan. I want you to look at verse number 12 in 2 Kings 5. Taking my time because I want you to understand this demon of pride that sometimes is operating in our lives and we don't know it. In verse 12 Naaman is talking about these rivers that he thought were better than the Jordan that the prophet had told him to go wash in it. He says, Art not Abano and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? He says, May I not wash in them and be clean? So watch this. So he turned away and turned and went away in a rage. Now, I want you to notice here how pride can make us look so silly. This is a man who the Bible says was a mighty man of valor, who was storming off like a little child because 
he wasn't instructed to go wash in the waters that he wanted to wash in. It's amazing to me how silly pride can make us look sometimes when we don't recognize it. Can you imagine, once again, I want you to imagine this mighty man of valor storming away like a little child because he didn't get to wash in the rivers that he wanted to wash in. Can you imagine that? Pride can make us look real silly. And how many know sometimes that we see pride operating in people's lives, but they don't? We see them looking silly, but they don't. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, this preacher just trying to help you today. I'm just trying to help you. Amen. I'm trying to help you to rid yourself of some pride in your life. Amen. Amen. Again, Naaman was dealing with a lot of issues in his life, but the root cause was his pride. He was angry at the man of God just because he obeyed God. He delayed his own healing because of his own pride. And he had a problem with the process that God had chosen for his healing because of his pride. Look at all of these problems that he was dealing with and did, and did not associate it with the pride that was in his life. Now I want you to take note of the fact that instead of simply being grateful for the instruction that the prophet had given him, Naaman was complaining about the process in which he would be healed. You see, pride can sometimes keep us from seeing the big picture. And it can keep us from seeing the things that are most important. And I also want to reiterate that sometimes God does things a certain way in our lives for the express purpose of exposing our pride. Sometimes God would allow a process in your life to rid you of pride so you can see yourself. Another thing that I want to revisit about Naaman's circumstance is that God actually used his servants to teach him a simple lesson about his pride as revealed in verse 13. See, Naaman's servant said to him, isn't it better that he told you to do something simple as washing seven times in the Jordan? And I'm paraphrasing here. In other words, God used someone who Naaman most likely thought he was better than to open his eyes to this simple truth. Naaman's servant basically pointed out to him that if Elisha the prophet would have instructed him to do some great thing in order to receive his healing, that he would have been glad to do it. You see, doing some great thing would have fed into the pride that existed in Naaman's heart. In other words, the revelation in what Naaman's servant said to him is that Naaman's reasons for complaining was based in his own pride. Yes. Amen. So I wonder if we were to take a close look back over our lives. I'm trying to get you to see your own pride, if there be any hidden pride in your life. But if we were to take a close look back of our own lives, how many times would we be able to recognize that it was pride operating in our lives at certain times? And if we look back, how many times would we recognize that pride has actually robbed us? And how many times would we recognize that it was our own pride that caused us to respond in a certain way in some circumstances? And how many times would we recognize that it was our own pride that destroyed, watch this, important relationships? How many know that pride can do that? It can destroy important relationships because we are mad because of our own pride. In other words, we don't have a real reason, a valid reason to be upset, but we get upset with people because of our own pride and it breaks and destroys relationships. When the only thing that you should have been destroying is the pride in your heart. 
And sometimes the people that we allow pride to dismiss from our presence or allow pride to keep us from interacting with, those people sometimes God has sent to your life to be a blessing in your life. But because of pride in your heart, I don't need you, okay? I don't need them. Sometimes you do need it. <laughs> Amen. But you don't understand that pride is the thing. Watch this now. I'm trying to get you to see that pride is being a thief in those cases. Are you with me? Pride is being a thief when he steals and destroys relationships that you actually need for your life. Amen. So I want you to understand that pride is indeed a thief in our lives. Now, after Naaman's servant, bear with me, amen, just a few moments and we'll be through this message. But after Naaman's servant said to him what he did about the prophet having asked him to do some simple thing. He was trying to teach Naaman or uh, let Naaman know that he should have been grateful for the simple process that God had designed for his healing. But Naaman was upset. And so after Naaman's servant said what he said to him, apparently it opened his eyes because verse 14 says that then Naaman went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan as the prophet had told him. And here's what I want you to see. After Naaman's eyes were apparently open, he went down and dipped himself like the, just like the prophet instructed. And then just like the prophet had said, the Bible says that Naaman's flesh came again to him, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. In other words, he was healed. So the lesson that I want you to learn from Naaman here is that it was Naaman's own pride that had been holding up his blessing and his healing because he had been complaining about the process. And the reason that he was complaining about the process, I want you to understand that was because of his pride. In other words, pride was manifesting as a hidden thief in Naaman's life. So when reflecting on this passage about Naaman, it causes me to wonder how many times has our own pride caused the blessing that God wanted to manifest in our lives to be held up as well. You see, Naaman's experience demonstrates to us that sometimes while we are complaining about the process, that sometimes we could have already received the healing that God wants for our lives if we could just drop our pride. And Naaman's experience also demonstrates to us that God doesn't really care what we think about the process that he has chosen for our lives. But he just wants us to follow his instruction. Amen? You see, Naaman's experience also shows us that it is not about who we are, but it is about God getting the glory. And it's about who God is. Amen? Amen? And so we want to understand, I want you to see today that God can use the simplest, simplest of methods to get to us what we need. Yeah. If we can rid ourselves of pride sometimes in our lives. And if we can do so, a lot of things that we need, we could possibly have. Amen. Naaman wanted to do some great things to receive his blessing because... He wanted glory for himself. Sometimes if we aren't careful, that same pride could be manifested in our lives. Now, another thing that is important to point out about Naaman's experience is that after he obeyed the prophet finally and dipped in the Jordan, he received his healing, but then the Bible lets us know that it was then that he recognized and realized in verse 15 that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. In other words, verse 15 reveals that prior to Naaman's experience of dipping in the Jordan and getting healed, 
He did not know that the only true God was in Israel. And that lets me know that sometimes the solution to some of the problems in our lives is that we just need to take a dip. Just like Naaman did. Because oftentimes our pride or our problems is rooted in pride. And if we take another dip, God can work out many problems in our lives. If we take a dip like Naaman did, we can actually restore some broken relationships in our lives. If we take a dip, we could get the breakthrough that we need in our lives. But sometimes pride is in our way. You see, I want you to get this message today that you need to identify and, elim and eliminate pride. I want you to get from this message that you need to identify and eliminate pride in your life because it is indeed a thief or can be a thief yeah. in your life. Another thing that is important, I believe, to mention in Naaman's case is that he also finally, he offered, he offered some money to the man of God because now he wanted to pay. <laughs> He wanted to pay for his healing. I mean, he was, it was like he was almost desperate to receive some type of glory for himself. But the Bible says that the prophet said to him, as the Lord liveth, verse 16, he says, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. Amen? Because the prophet did not want Naaman to think that he was paying for his healing. Amen. And sometimes we can, we can have a degree of pride, believe it or not, that's associated with our giving. Sometimes we can give in pride. Sometimes you can, you know, you can try to give, and it's, it's good to give, but sometimes we can give a big offering because of pride, because we want glory for ourselves. But when we give with that spirit, it is the wrong spirit. And it is pride operating in our lives. And this is why the man of God refused to even accept the money that was offered by Naaman. Now with that, there are a few other scriptures that I want to share with you in this subject of pride. And I'm going to be out of your way on today. I, I think these scriptures are very important for us to consider. You have some notes or something to write down. I want you to jot them down and remember that these are important scriptures relating to pride. The first one is in Pro Proverbs 8 verse 13, which says this. It says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. And the evil way and the forward mouth, the Bible says, do I hate. So the main portion of that scripture that I want you to understand is that it says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. So, And if you hate it, that means you won't desire it in your life or you would not desire it in your life. The next scripture is Proverbs 11 and 2, which says, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly, in other words, with the humble, is wisdom. Proverbs 16 and 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction. And in, haughty, and in haughty spirit before it fall. In other words, pride presents itself before destruction is manifested. Amen. Let me read that verse again. Pride goeth before destruction. And in haughty spirit before fall. 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, 
and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And then I want to read a few verses in Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19, which says, These six things doth the Lord hate. And it says, Seven are an abomination unto him. Verse 17 says, A proud look, which represents pride. And I'm not even going to read the, the next few verses in Proverbs 6 because I want you to understand that the main thing that I want to point out here is this spirit of pride that is represented in the text in verse 17. And finally in James 4 and 6 it says, But he giveth more grace wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the, hum to the humble. God resisteth the proud but giveth grace to the humble. Amen. So we must understand that pride is a thief. Pride can rob from us. And we ought to, the first chance we get or every chance we get, try to eliminate it from our lives. Because pride could be stealing from you. And I, I don't believe God wants you to allow pride to steal anything from you in this year that he has for your life. This is the reason, again, I say to you that one of the things that we can do in our lives on this year that will benefit us a lot in our lives, or more than anything else in some cases, is eliminating the spirit of pride in our lives. And again, some of us know that we are dealing with pride. But yet, we don't do what we should to eliminate it from our lives. I want you to understand today that you're only hurting yourself when you allow pride to operate in your life that which the Bible says God hates. And so I believe there have been many relationships destroyed because of this sin. Pride. This is the reason I believe God Allow me to share. I know a lot of times we like hooping and hollering, but sometimes we need to sit down and listen. We need to, we need to sit down and understand some of the things that's causing us the most problems in our lives. Sometimes it's real simple. And all we have to do is simply listen. So God's word for you today. Eliminate. Well, identify and eliminate hidden pride in your life because it is a silent thief. Don't allow it to steal from you anymore. Don't allow it to break up relationships anymore. Don't, don't allow it to steal the healing that God wants to bring to your life. Recognize pride for what it is, a silent thief in our lives. I want to stand, I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today who may be dealing with problems in your life but don't know that the underlying reason is your own pride. I want to pray for you today. Amen. And that God will help us, help all of us. The enemy likes to use this spirit of pride because again he fell from heaven because of his pride. He wants you to fall like he fell. How many would say the devil is alive? And I'm not going to allow him to use pride to cause me to lose what God has for me. Would you bow your heads and pray? Let's pray with me. Father, thank you today for this opportunity to share this simple word today about identifying and eliminating pride in our hearts. I pray, God, that you would do it as only you can. Show us the pride that is the hidden compartments of our own hearts, and our own lives, that cause us sometimes to miss the things that you desire for us, to cause us to miss out 
on healings, to cause us to miss out on relationships, to cause us to miss out on opportunities that you have for our lives. Help us not to have the pride that Naaman had in his life. Help us, Lord God, to understand that all glory in our lives belong to you. We don't take credit for anything that you have done through us. We give you all of the praise. We give you all of the glory. God, I pray for those on the sound of my voice, those in this sanctuary, those that may be listening by way of social media. Pray, Lord God, that you would somehow minister this word to them in a way that perhaps I could not to them. Perhaps, Lord, your Holy Spirit can speak to them and give them to see this enemy of pride. I believe you have instructed me today to warn the people of God about today that it may not be an active thief in their lives. God, I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for that individual today who don't know you in the part of their sins, who's dealing with different problems. Lord, I believe today that they receive you as the Lord of their life. They receive you as their Savior. Lord God, you can do a work in them and heal them in places where they're hurt in their lives. Lord, I pray for them now in Jesus' name. Lord, I can, we continue to lift up this young man by the name of Tamar who suffered a heart attack on this in the last several days. God, we ask, Lord, that you would continue to allow him to recover in such a way that it is you only that receive the glory. Touch his body in Jesus' name. Heal that young man. Lord, that he'll be able to move again like he used to move. And that will be all to your glory. Because had it not been for you, Lord, had it not been for the prayers of the righteous and many across the country, we believe this young man would not be alive today. But because, Lord, you have touched him. Because you have allowed your grace to work in his life. We're still able to give you praise for his life. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Lord, now we thank you for all that has been said today. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Hallelujah. We thank God for you today. Come on, put your hands together if you would. And let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. We appreciate your attention today. Pray that somehow um, the word spoken today has been inspiring to your life. Yes. Amen. Thank God for it. Amen.